Teaching 311 Each one of you shows me your own sanctuary, but the Master is pleased with the one you form with your union, with your spiritual harmony. That is why I have taught you love, so that through it you may arrive in spirit at the age of spiritual unification. Truly I tell you, then you will be able to present me the true sanctuary in which to listen to the divine concert. Today I find myself building that temple with my word, with the inspirations of my law and the spirit of my children. But you are still my disciples, and the toddlers still do not stop coming before my presence. Some I have taught for long years, to others I began to teach the first lessons in the third era. My word through this manifestation will soon end, and who will be the ones who, after me, should follow delivering the lesson to humanity? Who will continue to deliver the teachings contained in the great book of life? My disciples, whom I have been preparing for a long time, so that they can remain in my place, but not so that they can dedicate themselves to repeating my words, because then you will deliver the echo of the spokesperson, and it is not the words of humans that I come to bequeath, but the essence of the message. You have listened to my words through my spokesman. In it you have found imperfections that some have attributed to matter and others to the master. I do not come to accuse my children of whom I communicate, but I do tell you, in this demonstration I have not come to deceive you. I never have. I have bought you my revelations and my inspirations through human understanding, and together with my perfect teachings, have seen the imperfections of man. The Master tells you, this stage of my communication will pass, and then you, enlightened by the light of my Holy Spirit, you will know how to clearly distinguish where my essence is and what is the human imperfection, as the farmers do in the land that, when harvesting its wheat crop, know how to separate the shaft, so you will separate the wheat from my teaching, and you will keep in the barn of your heart and the shaft, which is the imperfection of the spokesman, will be forgotten, while the essence of my lessons will remain eternal in your spirit. In order to manifest myself at this time, in this form, I have made the call of great multitudes. From among them, I have chosen men and women in their different ages, spheres, and races. Those chosen of whom you form a part, they are the spirits whom I know, because there is not a single spirit that is strange to me. You are all my children. I have followed the path of the evolution of each one of you, because I have mapped out your destiny, and by calling you so that you are present in these demonstrations, I have selected my chosen ones. I have donated faculties and powers, being assisted in this task by the spirits of light, by my emissaries of peace, spirits full of verb, who have led you step by step on the path of spiritualism, helping you to find in yourself the gifts and the thank you, awakening the spirits towards the hereafter, towards eternity. With my divine lessons and with the tests that I am wisely putting throughout your life, I have gone developing your spirit, forging it for the fight, discovering what was previously a mystery to it, an arcane impenetrable. You have recreated in my work and through my lessons, you are learning to interpret the teachings of the first and second errors, which the illusions still fail to understand. The trials that you find in your path overwhelm you but instantly you think that my divine spirit is in your being, like a star, like a beacon, and you always look for that light to save you. Many of the chosen ones whom I have showered with graces have been cold for their mission in my work. The ideals of the world, temptations, and unreadiness have separated you from me. And how many who have been constant before my lessons, even though they were not one of the chosen ones, nor have they received through the spokesperson the mark and the gifts, 
I contemplate them clothed of my grace, because from spirit to spirit I have given them gifts, and in them there is the grace that is in all of you from the beginning of time. Blessed are the faithful. Blessed are those who remain strong until the end of testing. Blessed are those who have not rejected the strength that my teaching imparts to them, because they and the times of bitterness that are coming will pass through the vicissitudes of life with strength and light. Be faithful, disciples, because my work will never disappoint you. The Master will fulfill His promise, and there will not be a single absent moment in your struggles with humanity. My teachings, from which your spirit is fed, tends to transform you into teachers, into the faithful apostles of the Holy Spirit. I have not come with these revelations to bring you only world peace and make your sufferings more bearable with the body balm. I have come to give you with this manifestation the great lessons that will tell you about your spiritual evolution. Because if only I had come to give you the goods of the world, truly I tell you, for that it would have been enough to entrust it to the scientists, whom he would have enlightened through intuition, revealing to them the secrets of nature, so that from there they would take the bosom to heal themselves from your bodily illnesses. My work comes to show you broader horizons beyond your planet of that infinite number of worlds that surround you, horizons that do not have an end, showing you the path of eternity that belongs to you. It is to your spirit that I speak to seek its perfection through my light, my law, which is found in the awareness. Convert that law into a scale on the way so that you may come to me because it is your arrival that I await with longing so that you, O oh dearly loved children, can enjoy my kingdom, live understanding my love, and I, in turn, can receive yours, which must be perfect so that your spirit can recreate itself in the universal magnificence of my work. Conquer that kingdom, disciples. I help you. Because in this fight, how many enemies, how many temptations will oppose your step and how many abysses you will have to bridge. You are the people of Israel who walk through the desert in pursuit of the promised land. You no longer have as your guide Moses. It is your father who marches before his people, the one who encourages and lifts you up. And although through my chosen, I let you recognize that above them is the universal guide who is God, who is your father, the one who speaks and tells you, go forward, defeat your enemies. Do not lose heart in trials. You will not perish in the way. Ahead, do not deny your destiny because you do not know if at that precise moment you can already glimpse in the horizon the land of promise. To my chosen ones, I have given great gifts. One of them is that of healing, the bomb, so that with that gift, you can fulfill one of the most beautiful missions among humanity. Since your planet is Valley of Tears, where there is always pain. Through that gift, you have a vast field to sow consolation. According to my will, and that bomb I have deposited in your being, in the most tender fibers of your heart. And with him, you have recreated before his prodigies. He has bent your neck. Your heart has been softened with the pain of men, and you have always walked a path of charity. Keep giving that bomb that is not in your hands, because it overflows in glances of compassion comfort, understanding, passes through good thoughts and becomes sound advice, words of light. The gift of healing has no limit. Never forget that you are saturated with it and if pain took hold of you because you are subject to testing. If with that bomb you cannot remove it, do not forget my teachings. Forget your suffering and think of others, 
and whom the pain is greater. And then you will see prodigies in you and in your brothers. I have allowed my spiritual world in the same stage of my manifestation at this time to communicate with you through those empowered to receive those being saturated with my bomb so that they would be masters of love and charity between you. Some of you have appreciated his patience, his humility. Others have made an object of humiliation, humiliation, materialization, and those beings of light have not made me present their complaints, your claims. They are the understanding spirits who have descended from your spiritual misery before your demand and smallness, sacrificing many times their own spirituality with the ideal of getting out of the darkness to bring you to the light. But this stage will soon end. My spiritual world, intercessor of peasants and multitudes, will tell me, Lord, do not judge our brothers by offenses that have been done to us. And if they intercede for you in this way and forgive you, what will the Father not do to grant you his forgiveness? They have penetrated even the humblest homes, following your tracks of misery and pain. They have come everywhere to the call of my workers and sick people, without fear of staining themselves, looking only for the wound to heal her, sadness to leave consolation, illnesses to make her healthy. And the Father tells you, the example that my spirit world has given you, you must record it in your spirit. Do not forget, just as they are, I want you to be so that the end of these manifestations, you take this bomb to your brothers without distinctions of classes, races, and ideologies, that you enter the royal palaces, the humble huts, or the most filthy place, without fear of contagion, censorship, or mockery. Go always in pursuit of those who suffer, and leave the best fruits of your love as a trace of your step. If you so comply, you will have imitated my spiritual world, that is, my faithful disciple and your teacher. And just as they do not seek any retribution, and when they have given you the greatest benefits, they have always done it in my name. So I want that you go through the ways of the world, so in comfort, health, and love, even when in exchange for all this, you receive as my spiritual world and as your master in that second era, blasphemies, humiliations, and an ingratitude. You should not expect any retribution in this world, but if you want to achieve a reward, let her be the satisfaction, the joy of having raised the dead to my truth and of having consoled the sad. I have given you in my law eternal peace, and I want each one of you to be like a lark of peace, that your wings never close, that you know how to move to all places, whether materially or with thought, through your prayers, and there, where war and discord reign, where iniquity arises, may you be like angels of peace, as guardians and emissaries of the Holy Spirit. See that this humanity has never offered me the fruits of peace. From their principles, they have lived in wars. Incessantly, they have struggled to achieve insane ideals, to live in debauchery, and to feed hatred and revenge. That is the fruit that men offer me, and now those struggles have not ended yet. Humanity is preparing to undertake its greatest fight. It is preparing its most powerful weapons, the weapons of your understanding. Men walk towards their own destruction. Above them, the beings of the hereafter stir. Some are emissaries of my love and inspire in man peace, justice, harmony. The others, 
they only inspire hatred, wars, and reveal to men of science the means of destruction, which the human brain alone would not be able to discover. These events, long ago I prophesied to men through my apostle John, so that they would be watching and praying, but they have only slept, and there are the enemies of peace, who fight in the heart of humanity to lead her to the abyss. That is why I make you emissaries of love, so that you are united with the legions of peace, and good may triumph so that with your works you collaborate in the fulfillment of John's prophecy. When that time of struggle that I have announced to you, and in which you will have to cross providence, countries, and seas arise, do not let yourselves be imitated by the noise of wars, nor allow your spirit to falter in the presence of death, but you must spread the wings of your idea of peace, so that this prayer covers men. You must make use of all the gifts of your spirit, so that you sow my seed of love. My manifestation at this time has made you know how great the fight and the trials that await you will be. Will your love overcome the hardness of men? Truly I tell you, my peace will have to overcome, but I will not impose it by strength. It will come through the conviction emanating from my teachings, and when it penetrates the heart of the most obsessed with evil, that heart will have finally reached peace. The Master tells you, the pain greater than all the sorrows and sins of men will come. That pain will be the chalice of his repentance. Before him, they will bow their necks, and when they receive my pardon and my balm, they will confess to be my servants. I have given you, O oh my children, the gift of the Word, because I am the eternal Word. I am the divine Word that never ceases. I am the divine concert, and I have given you a part of it. That Word that I have deposited in your spirit will speak, and your lips, which today are clumsy, now will be eloquent, docile, and faithful interpreters of the divine concert. The gift that will amaze you and which you will be ecstatic, and through which men will enjoy and feel my presence. You have begun to develop that gift, because I tell you again, of the abundance that is in your heart and in your spirit, your lips will speak. Whatever comes from your heart, keep it, love it, and when you give it up, it will have essence and life. If, on the contrary, you were to speak without telling the truth, it will be like a vain seed that will not germinate in the hearts of your brothers. Disciples, great are the lessons that I have given you, because the end of this manifestation is already very near. And you must not forget that it will be after this stage, when in your meetings my word flourishes through the communication from spirit to spirit. It will be then when your lips deliver the great revelations of my kingdom, and with my message of love, penetrate all hearts and then men will say, How is it that this man knows how to read what was stored in my heart? But remember that it will not be you. It will be the one who speaks through you. For these gifts you will not feel yourselves Lord. You will not be great among humanity, because your flesh will not denote anything of that spiritual greatness. You will be one of all. You will not wear badges that distinguish you. You will apparently be like all, but in your spirit, in the moments that are propitious, my arcade will overflow. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, you carry 
the gift of clairvoyance, which is not limited to contemplating the spiritual messages from the beyond. Clairvoyance is a broader gift. It is intuition. It is foreboding. It is prophecy. Messages that you receive in your dreams. Clairvoyance is the spiritual gaze that you contemplate the past, the present, and even the future according to my will. How many times the seer contemplating a mirage will not know what he has seen and those who listen to his testimony, they will understand that message. Now the seers are in preparation and truly I say to you, you are all seers. Some have developed into a form, others in another, but all of you have the spiritual gaze in a latent state. Those who, in the form of symbolic silhouettes, they contemplate what my will is in their prayer. I have them in preparation because after 1950, it will be very great. The mission that I will entrust to them and their responsibility will increase. That is why I tell you, Prepare yourselves, because when this word no longer resounds through the spokesmen, the crowds, both believers and unbelievers, will greatly need your testimony. Your voice of alert and preparation will be like a torch in the middle of the night. You will be like heralds that awaken the peoples that still sleep. Prepare yourselves, people, so that after 1950, you will know how to receive in your spirit the message that descends from my love. I have told you about your spiritual gifts, and when you no longer listen to me in this way, you will discover in them all the greatness enclosed in your own being. You will listen to me again, and you will cry in wonder of so much love, of as much grace as I have clothed you. But you should not make use of the faculty to communicate by your understanding with the spirit world. After the year 1950 ends, spirit beings of light will continue to vibrate through the empowered and those who were not, but their manifestation will be present by inspiration. So they will continue to deliver their healing bomb and they will perform wonders and their words will be inexhaustible among you. But if after some time of these manifestations, you begin to hear rumors that the master of the spirit world have again communicated through human understanding, you can deny it because my word is only one and my law never varies. You will live alert, O oh people, so that you know how to distinguish the voice of the true prophets and the testimony of the apostles of the imposter. You will live alert so that you do not fall into the next works of falsehood and be the strong ones of these times of struggle and of those to come. For a conglomerate of disciples of mine who remain faithful to my teachings, who do not stain or let the soldier abandon his banner of spiritual purity, my truth will be in them, and I will manifest myself. Through him I will speak to the other people and tell them, this is my work, these are my disciples, and the best sign that I will give to the world of those who are my emissaries, it will be that, in great trials, the false will fall and the faithful will remain firm. The false will deny the pain, and the faithful will bless me. The false will turn their back, and the faithful will be always firm before my law. I want you all to be my faithful witnesses and my beloved disciples, and for this I prepare you. But before finishing my lesson of this day, I am going to tell you something that should not surprise you. I have spoken to you in my teachings of the called and of the chosen. Do you think that a father who is perfect like me can have predilections or make distinctions between his sons? 
can an evolved spirit accept that his father donates some of his children and leave others without inheritances? When you begin to fulfill your mission and reach the nations, the most remote people, in the same jungle, you will meet human beings and you will make them understand that you are all brothers. You will give them testimony of my spiritualist doctrine and you will marvel at the proofs of love that I am going to give you. There, among those beings isolated from civilization, but also very far from human perversity, you will find great spirits who will come to increase the ranks of the people of Israel. As you go by, the sick will receive the balm and be healed. The sad ones will cry for the last time, but their tears will be of rejoicing. And before these tests that you give, the multitude will bless the Lord and his disciples. You will be acclaimed as that day your master entered Jerusalem. But also among those who acclaim you, men will arise and women who will be filled of the gifts that you have. And some you will be amazed by his gift of prophecy. And others, my bomb will be unceasing. And others, my word will flow like crystalline water. And thus you will see it arise from among your brothers as an inexhaustible seed, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then you will recognize that you are not the only ones, that you are only the spokesman of God those in charge of awakening humanity and to tell him that man possesses in his spirit an inexhaustible wealth of virtues and that the gifts I have delivered you as your Lord and as your Father. You will discover that before the justice of God's love, you are all equal. You are all gifted with the same grace and spirit and truly it will be then when humanity tries to clarify in an excel the mystery of its existence, they will penetrate within themselves and they will recognize their own spirit. Then, raising their faces to infinity, they will ask everything they cannot understand. Everything that you can teach them, you must make it known, and everything that you cannot discover because their knowledge corresponds to your father, prepare yourselves so that I, through you, reveal them. But first you must recognize your mission. And if I still call you the people of Israel, there will come a day when everyone will develop their own gifts. They will be equal before me, before their Lord, and they will become a single people, which will be the people of God. At the end of my lesson, my spirit from the hereafter, where it finds itself recreating with my presence, united with the spiritual legions of peace, he will send his feelings of love, his thoughts of peace and charity, to this humanity that because it is divided into sects and religions, it has not fully reached the light for its spirit. And you, what can you ask the Father if He has already given you everything from the beginning? It is your consciousness that allows your spirit to take the fruit to which it has been credited. When you go through your ways of struggle, everything you will need will already be deposited in them. You only have to do merits that make you creditors of my love. Why am I talking to you like that, my children? Because I love you. Because I am not pleased with your sufferings. As Father, I would always like to see the spiritual smile of peace on your face. I bless you, and once again I say to you, Be the worthy emissaries of my universal peace. My peace be with you.